I used to think I had my iPad home screen figured out. I had all these fancy widgets everywhere and I thought it was making me more productive because I didn't have to tap on any apps to get information. However, every time I sat down to do work, I had too many pieces of information available to me at once. Since the 12.9 inch iPad is so big, I would just get overwhelmed and either not even look at the widgets or get distracted by them. Either way, the benefit of the widgets was not really clear to me. I also had YouTube, my main media consumption app, on my home screen. I could and do routinely spend hours watching vid after vid on YouTube. The iPad is an awesome media consumption device, so having that app visible to me made it so easy to get distracted. I had a problem. The device I was hoping to increase my productive output was actually reducing it. So I set out to reimagine my home screen, and I came up with this. For the wallpaper on lock screen, just a quote that I really like, super minimal. I used to have these widgets, but I only really want to see the time, the date, and maybe the next upcoming event if I have one. Personally, I think the way Apple implemented widgets on iPad is kind of wasteful. They're tucked off to the left side and it's really hard to see under most backgrounds. Okay, the home screen. I limit myself to three widgets. The weather, it's always good to have, but it's also not something that stresses me out to look at, like my calendar or my to-do list. Next, email. I actually really like Apple's mail widget. I just keep this here because it's easy to have important mail accessible at all times and I can always tell if something new comes in and what it is. As annoying as mail is, it is critical to my work. Third, a shortcuts widget. All eight of these shortcuts are used pretty much daily. I posted a video early about shortcuts and I'll link it in the top right. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. But there are a bunch of other shortcuts, not only in this folder, but on my other folders for different setups for my phone as well. So if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe and I'll cover those in an upcoming video. In making this new setup, I ran into a critical problem. How was I gonna balance a workflow that was both productivity focused and clean and minimal? I didn't want to use a bunch of shortcuts and widgets that, again, I felt weren't very helpful in the first place. Well, it turns out the solution is in the Magic Keyboard. Similar to on the Mac, you can hit Command Space at the same time to access Spotlight Search. This is an amazing shortcut as you can access it from anywhere, and Spotlight can do almost anything. I realized that I don't need any apps on the home screen, and any apps that are so frequently used that I need them all the time, I'll just keep on the dock. Picking which apps belong on the dock was probably the hardest part of this setup because I use so many different apps, but after really thinking about the way I use my device and what I use most frequently, this is what makes the most sense for my workflow. And if you're trying to do something similar, then I encourage you to think about which apps you use and how you use them, and that'll help you figure out what to put on your dock. Okay, left to right on the dock. First, I have the calendar just because I like having the date visible at all times. Then I have this shortcut that allows me to input reminders both to my reminders app and syncs it to my calendar. I posted this in that shortcuts video that I mentioned earlier, so definitely check that out if you're interested on how this works. But it allows me to see my reminders and my calendars in one spot, kind of like how Google Calendar allows you to do so, so I don't have to continue to jump back and forth between two apps. Then I have the numbers app, which is where my habit tracker and my finance trackers live, so I always want to be able to access those. Then I have the notes app, which is where I plan all my YouTube content, have all my medical knowledge and all of my other random ideas and anything else I can think of or need to jot down. So it's probably the most important app in my ecosystem. Then I have Procreate and Photos. These go together often in split view because I'm often doing thumbnails in Procreate and I want the photos from my photos app to be able to be dropped into that pretty easily. And then finally, I'm always working to music. I'm a big music nut, so Got to have Spotify on the dock at all times as well. I mean, you may be asking yourself, how can having less on your home screen make you more efficient? But trust me, don't knock it until you try it. I've learned that less is more when it comes to your phone or iPad home screen setups. 
I don't really waste time anymore making things aesthetic or having too many fancy focus modes or widgets because what I really need is function. If you notice, I don't have messages, FaceTime, or any media apps on the home screen. Although I use those things all the time, I just don't want them visible to me so that when I'm on my iPad, I know that I'm in a mode to get stuff done, to either produce something for videos or to study. I've also turned off all notifications for all of these media apps on my iPad anyway. If my goal is to watch YouTube or Netflix, it's fine, I can just use command space or manually search for the app, but then at least it's an intentional decision that I've made. I just want work to be as peaceful and as frictionless as possible. And that's it. This is my iPad home screen setup that's very minimal yet productivity focused. By the way, this entire video, including all of the audio, was captured on iPhone 15 Pro Max with no external hardware. Leave a like if you liked the video, subscribe if you loved it. It lets me know that I'm making the right kind of videos for you, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.